Hey guys, Captain Foley here. Uh, I'm starting a new model build and I thought I would share with you guys. Uh, I'm doing the Bandai ATST um, 148 scale assault walker, chicken walker, whatever you want to call it. One of my favorite uh, ships from Trek. Or, uh, from Star Wars, sorry. Um, and uh, I thought I'd share with you guys some of the process. Now, um, if you've seen the instructions, which I'll take a look at right now, the Bandai kits are really good. They're really simple. Most of it's snapped together. You don't even need glue. Uh, I do glue a few pieces, but... So this whole f f uh, first section is done. I've got this piece ready to go. What I'm going to do is, as I move along, I'm going to weather it and paint it each section as I go. Um, so this is the main body section, kind of where the legs attach to the upper part. And I've added some weathering and a few other things. I even got a little um, oil leak here by the hoses that's trickled down. Might change it a little bit. I want to add a little bit of rust and stuff to this as well. Um, but I painted the hoses. The hoses are black there. And uh, each section as I go along, because the next section is building one of the legs. I'll weather that leg once it's finished being built and then move on from there and so on. And then once the finished model is done, I'll add a few finishing up weathering touches. Uh, like I said, I want to add a little bit of silver uh, to this or, or a color like steel or aluminum or something as well as um, some rust colors. So I want this to be a very used looking uh, ATST, not a brand new one out of the factory. So, there you have it, guys. Might make a few changes back here. I don't know if I want these black or not, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, there we go. That's the first step, and uh, I will keep you posted on the build progress as we move along with it. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be on to this next part now, adding those and then doing the leg. So, all right, guys, it's been a few days later, and I got most of this built at the uh, my weekly model build night with my model club. Um, it does stand-ish. It's not really balanced properly without the head on it, but it does stand on the base that it comes with. The joints down here are kind of shitty. Um, they don't really move the best. But... Um, Got these little toe pieces that move and then there's also a lot of movement and articulation up in the legs here so it can do a variety of poses as it says on the box but not super happy with the movement uh, as it sits right now now as you can see this part's all done as far as weathering and stuff goes i still have to add some rust but i gotta do the legs now and that'll be the next video that i do um just kind of doing some detailing on those so Stay tuned for that, guys. Um, I just ignore this. We're actually doing a video with Andrew Probert earlier today, and we're talking about this specific shuttle, so that's why that's there. So, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go back to using uh, the Tamaya. This is the German gray. Um, it's also flat black and light gray, and the Valio model wash. For gray and dark vehicles this is the gray one this is like a pin wash um, <clears throat> and i'll probably do a quick video on how to do that real quick uh, i also need to add some rust colors and stuff so i gotta get my rust out because i want to add a few rust elements to the body uh, as well so there you have it guys just a quick update and uh let's uh see what we can do with this thing all right stay tuned for the walker Alright guys, so I've got the one leg weathered here, just using the pin wash and some of this dark gray. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second, I just wanted to show you what I got going on here. I just didn't want it to have a brand new look, I wanted it to look old and something that's used for sure. There you have it. 
It's all greasy and grimy, and I've added some streaking. Um, simulates weather. Some rain. Especially back here, in these joints. So this one looks all pristine and new. As you can see here. And then this is how it looks weathered. Um, it's still not finished, of course. I'm going to go over it one, a few more times. But I'll show you guys how to do that real quick just now. Um, <clears throat> and again, I'm no pro at this. It's my first time using, like, washes and stuff. Uh, there are different ways to weather different things. And uh, this is something that just worked for me over the years. Um, so. And don't mind this. This is just the attachment piece that attaches the... Uh, main body to the legs. I've painted it dark so it's it hides well. Um, it's got, I gotta go over it with another coat but I left the ball joint of course clear and the part at the bottom that attaches to the the main body is unpainted as well. Um, I'm just using this to hold it while it dries so ignore that if you will. So with these pin washes I use a very Thin, fine brush. Uh, this one's an older one, so it's kind of rat ratty. And uh, I've got this old container. It's actually from Easter. Small little Easter egg candies that I put my wash in. Keeping these little containers is really helpful. I got containers from a whole bunch of different sources. Um, just let me turn on the upper light here. Hold on one second. That might give you some better lighting. Sorry about the uh, water running, but that's just... Sylvia's up having a shower. So these washes... Let me just put them in like so. It's really hard for me to see what I'm doing here on the camera, but... You just wash it over. Depending on the scale of the model and the effects, the different effects you want, there's a bunch of different ways to do these. Um, but it just it gets in all the little cracks there and really shows off the highlights, like the rivets and things. I'm gonna do this part here too. So I just usually go to quick once over with this. And here's more of the maneuverability of these legs. Like they're pretty agile as far as being able to pose this thing. But uh, hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on here. And since it's so thin, it uh, fills in the cracks, then it dries. Uh, one thing you can do is use a Q-tip and uh, dip it in some paint thinner, then roll it and then wipe off the excess, uh, depending on what look you're going for, like I said. And again, I don't claim to be a pro on this. I definitely am not. I'm going to take that shield off. But this is how I do it, how I get my uh, weathered look, so I thought I'd share it with you guys at least. Like you saw the before, nice, clean, pristine uh, looking model there. Another thing you can do if you want something a little bit darker is get a little bit of paint on the brush, put it in the lid there, put in some paint thinner. <clears throat> and this acts just as well if you don't have a um, an actual uh, wash. Put it on, like so. And you just generally just wipe it off. Use your finger, you can use a Q-tip, you can use paper towel, whatever you want to wipe it off, but. You can wipe off as much or as little as you need, depending on the look you're going for. See at the back of this joint, I've got quite a few uh, 
stains and things and other parts are a little bit cleaner. So it all depends on what you're looking for. As far as effect wise, finished products, like I said, I wanted this to be an older uh, ATSC that's kind of been beat up a bit by the Imperials fighting the rebels. So it was rode hard and put away wet for sure. You can have like little You can have little um, <clears throat> oil drips and things like I did over here. Got the hydraulics leaking, these hydraulic lines here. Got a little bit of a leak there and it looks like the oil's leaking and hasn't been maintained very well. Um, so this might be on like an out, outer rim planet. Something that doesn't get a lot of servicing. You know, as long as it works, it works that kind of thing so but anyway back to this side <clears throat> and you want to you're gonna want to go back a different few different times and just make sure you got the look you want you have to rub some things off uh, put more on it all just depends on what you're going for look wise but I like having little few little streaks and things running down like it's been out in the rain, been out in the weather. That's why it's called weathering, guys. What? Did not know that, Captain Foley. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So, sorry these aren't super informative, but um, this is just how I do it. And, you know, a lot of model builds out there are probably cringing right now, going, what the hell are you doing? Because there's more subtle ways to do this kind of thing. And there are, but sometimes I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> and it all depends, too, on your skill level. Uh, mine's not the best, so... And here again, you want the... Just give it a light rub with the Q-tip. That gets off what you need, but still maintains some of that dirt look. And you'll go back and revisit it a few times. i got to add a few more colors in here, like I want to add another... I wanted to put my rust on today, but my rust is all dried out, my old paint, so I gotta go buy some more. Otherwise, I'd be doing that for you guys. But once the model's complete, then you can go back and add even more weathering and touch up anything you didn't like or something that didn't work out so great. So, use the wash in here. Use this in here. I like the joints to be very dirtied up and oily because I mean if I go look at some of my dad's equipment that he's got at his house I mean some of it's been neglected and some of it looks dirty and old and it gives it a real sense of realism at least for me some people want a brand new look a fresh out of the showroom ATST and hey, that's definitely cool, but not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this, and then I'll give you guys a quick look of what it looks like when I'm finished. So hopefully that has instructed you guys a little bit on the weathering that I'm doing here. And I'll be back in a minute with this leg finished. So guys, a few minutes later, and I've got both uh, feet and legs done up got a lot of black on my hands from wiping stuff off but you really can't argue with the results too much um, so there's kind of a uniform dirtiness there the feet I'm gonna dirty up a little bit more later I gotta put some brown for dirt and some green stains on there and uh, there's the other little part I want to make uh, either aluminum or steel color uh, and then rust, as I said, but I gotta get more paints uh, to do that. But uh, next time you see it, it might be done up a little bit more. But there you have it, guys. Let me just switch camera again. All right, so I put the uh, main swivel part on again. 
Um, <clears throat> so there you have it guys. Kind of a dirtied up ATST. Like I said, it's going to undergo quite a few changes between now and the finished product. Once it's assembled, I'll go back and re re-weather it and add some detailing, stuff like that. But this is the main effect that you guys get. There's a few spots there by this hinge up here. Right there by my thumb that I want to uh, go back and revisit because that doesn't look very realistic. Um, but there's my oil leak again. I'll probably add to that a little bit. But there it is, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying this build and I'll be back in a minute, which might be a day or so from now, <laughs> to show you how the progress has gone. Uh, next up, I need to paint the cockpit, uh, the interior cockpit and the pilots and stuff. So it'll probably be the painting techniques for those and uh, show you the finished product there before the assembly of the main compartment. So see you in a minute, guys. Hey guys, Captain Foley back with uh, <clears throat> more on the ATST. I actually went over to my friend uh, Dave's place today and finished most of it off. Um, got the interior uh, nicely painted and detailed, which you'll probably never see, unfortunately. Um, I will put pictures up uh, on the video so you guys can see exactly what the interior looks like. Um, but I've also done a nice dry brush with the uh, silver uh, chrome so it's got that weathered look uh, it looks really good in certain light it looks all scratched and beat up I still have to do decals and a few more minor touch-ups with paint especially on the guns um, but there you have it I kind of skipped ahead on you guys and I apologize but like I said I was there in my buddy's place all day working on it and got a lot done so very proud of it and I got a lot of pictures of, of the uh, process uh, for you guys to enjoy so there you go um, uh, yeah and that silver chrome <clears throat> trim paint is just fantastic it gives it such a beautiful look definitely like uh, scratched metal so I uh, still got to do the decaling like I said and a few other little minor things um, I want to add some detailing to the vents back here. A few other small things. And uh, <clears throat> maybe add a little bit of weathering to the guns as well. But like I said, all of the interior details, um, actually I'm going to just uh, turn on the, f the uh, flash right now and see if we can look inside there. Okay, so we got the flash on on the camera and you can look in there and see a little bit of the detailing some buttons and some cockpit things going on um, I can also take the top off so there we go we got the top popped off and as you can see there's some of the detailing inside some of the instrumentation buttons knobs little joysticks silver detailing some red white yellow just to add some realism to it it's not the best but uh, I'm very happy with it the seats have little notches in them for the pilots which I considered taking out and sanding but I'm not sure I might even put the pilots in there still at some point and like I said the top does come off so I mean I can always add detailing and whatnot later for that but um, anyway, there you have it, guys. So uh, next time you see it, it should be all done. I should have the um, the uh, decals and stuff on there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put Chewbacca in there or not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but overall, I'm super happy with it. And it just looks old, beat up, and weathered. Still a little bit of work to do on the guns, like I said. Still got the oil leak there. 
leaking out of the pipes. Just add some realism. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, next time you see it, it should be finished. So talk to you soon. It's Captain Foley. Saying I'll see you in a second due to the miracle of magic editing. Alright guys, this is probably a month or so on. It's finished now. You can see the decals I created for it. Uh, thanks to my friend Jbot, he printed them out for me. Um, added some rust elements and some silver. Even put a little decal on the gun there <clears throat> and weathered it. Use some silver chrome trim uh, to brush on there so the guns look very used. And of course, they pivot and move, all of them. And more rust on the legs, as you'd expect for being an old, beat up unit. This. On the front, that's Imperial writing. It says Killer Chicken. There's a little in joke. I do have the pilots in there right now. Um, pilots are kind of loose sitting in there, but I've also filed off the tabs on the inside for the, the uh, top, so it just sits on now. Uh, it's not on there tight, but again putting the decals on and scuffing them up so they look like they've it's been walking through trees and a whole bunch of other stuff and branches have been hitting it some of the more rusty parts are like parts that would move and become rusty that way Got a little blaster mark there with a little bit of rust. The uh, light on my camera is really kind of washing it out and showing some of the stuff that I really can't see when, in real life, in real lighting. Here's the detailing I added to the back of the vents. Got some rust streaks coming down from those things. Got some rust around the... around the uh, tubes and hydraulic lines and stuff to give it a more realistic look. So the, the mix of weathering with light gray and then as well as some silver gives it a very metallic look. And again, this light on this camera really isn't doing it justice. It looks so much better in real life. But I also got a lot of pictures of the build process that I'm going to show you guys during the course of this video, uh, as well as some static shots of it finished outside. It looks fantastic in, in the regular light. But what I'm going to do now is show you the interior, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys really like it because I know I do. I'm a huge fan of the ATST, and this one really works for me. So there's the interior with the pilots. Got little scuffs on their helmet, little Imperial decals as well, which is not fun to do on something that size. But yeah, this has like tabs at the front here um, in the corners that you can't see now because I've filed them off so that the top can just sit on properly. I don't have to worry about snapping it on and having a difficult time getting it off if I want to show off the interior. Which I should focus. There we go. And then, of course, the, the top is here. You can see the rust elements. I've also got it so I can pop this hatch off and put on the open hatch. So the open, <clears throat> so the open hatch has... Um, 
detailed interior uh, that's weathered as well. There we go. And then the outer part rusted the same. The figure also came with Chewbacca, which I'm not a figure painter. And again, the light really washes out his colors. I added a few different browns and painted his bandolier. Tried to get his eyes. I'm not good with figure figure painting, and these are very small. If you compare it to my thumb, it's actually quite small. So, again, this lighting on this thing is atrocious because it's so bright. So in regular lighting, he looks all right. Um, so yeah, I do have the pilots as well. They're painted. Like I said, they got a uh, little. Imperial symbols on their helmets. Which wasn't fun at all to do, just so you guys know. And these aren't painted perfectly great. Like I said, I'm really zoomed in right now, so it really shows off the flaws. I'm trying to get this thing to focus here. scuffs on their helmet and their leather leather vests and then of course the interior I've added a little bit more detail kind of scuffed up the seats a little bit made them look used it's by no means professional quality but I'm very proud of it I love ATSTs so I added some more detailing in there as well. Okay, you can look through the windows and see the detailing if you got a bright light. All right, so let's this thing on a tripod here. As I said, all the guns move. This one rotates. It's like a rocket launcher of sorts. The gun on the front swivels up and down. Um, also moves side to side. So good range of motion there. I love the little detail I've got on there of the devil's face. Gun on the side. Of course, can fire up or down. Usually have it facing right about there. So, yeah. There it is, guys. And with Bandai, it also comes with the little blasters, which you can put into the tip of the guns. So it can be um, shooting at something. Kind of a pain to get in, but there you go. As I said, uh, I did some various uh, pictures of the build process and the painting of the uh, cockpit and stuff, which I'll put over there. Uh, it was an interesting paint project. I wanted to I used like a cockpit green to get some of the uh, padded parts of the interior done. And... A lot of silvers and whites and yellows and reds, things that the Imperials would have as far as buttons go. And then there was a process of designing these stripes, these decals on the uh, thing itself. Went through a couple different drawings and iterations, and then I gave them uh, to my good friend uh, Jim, who owns JBot Decals. 
he printed them off for me and uh, I put them on. This I changed when I put it on. I wanted it to go down there initially and then over. Um, but I thought this looked better. Put it over. It's got the little imperial symbol there on the side. And then the classic little red devil that my old Kenner one has. Because like I said, I'm a huge fan of these things. Uh, which I might actually go grab that and end the video with comparing it with this and the Metal Earth one that I have. Uh, I do want to get another version of this and actually put some Starfleet markings on it. Maybe have a regular Starfleet version and also a Mirror Universe version of it I think might be neat. I'm going to take these out right now. Um, so, And it's still, like I said, it's still set up so you can take the top off. You can put on the open canopy if you want you can have the pilots in or out they're currently out you can also have chewbacca standing up in there um but I'm not super happy with the way chewy turned out but there you go uh, and then i did some beautiful shots of it outside in the natural lighting and it looks fantastic i got got the camera really low in some shots so it looks real it looks like it's standing there menacing uh so overall, I'm happy. Bandai kits are really great kits. They uh, they allow you a lot of freedom to build without having a lot of build knowledge uh, because they are basically snap together kits. Uh, I did glue a few elements on this, things that kept falling off, like some of the, the guards on the shin here and underneath here, the skid plates. Uh, but it does come with a base as well. You could stand it on, but it stands so well that I don't want to um, put it on that because I can adjust the leg stance a little bit, make them wider uh, and things like that as well. So got quite a lot of movement in this part here and here, make it spread really wide and you, you know, for, for balance and stabilization, the gyroscope thing on this must be amazing unless you're walking on logs. But the movement down here and here is really restricted. And we do have, of course, the toes, which, you know, can move up. Like, this, like so, or down. Um, they also move side to side. So that helps with balance as well. And uh, yeah, so I would highly recommend picking one of these up if you can. Like I said, I'm gonna get more of them uh, and build a few more. I'd like to have a few of these sitting on a shelf side by side and see how that looks. Uh, Cause the ATST is one of my favorite Star Wars vehicles and just sci-fi ground assault vehicles overall. I prefer it to the AT. Uh, at, at the at, at I prefer it to that as well um, so I was so happy to build this and I really like the way it turned out I love the fact that I could customize it I like the one stripe there and it's all scuffed up and beat up and uh, of course it says killer chicken because it is a chicken walker which I thought was a nice little touch uh, so I want to thank Jbot for that for getting those decals made up for me um, it's, it's really awesome to be able to have somebody to uh, customize your decals like that. So, so there's the other side with the see the blast marks here, and of course on the other side of the screen, you guys can enjoy all of the the pictures of the build process that I didn't include because I wasn't making videos at the time. So I was at my buddy's place, and I don't want to film when I'm there. We just start, we just talk about stuff and build work on models. So. So here's all the other accessories it comes with and of course the blasters that shoot out the front so that's it i'm going to actually go grab the metal earth one and my original kenner toy and put them all together in the shot so you guys can see them all together and that'll be the wrap up to this video so guys here they are, are all together here's the little metal earth one this was a headache to make every time i make a metal earth uh, sculpture i say it's going to be the last one because i absolutely hate it because the process is difficult with these, but you can't argue with the results. They turn out really beautiful. Um, and uh, I wanted to share that with you guys as well, right there. And of course, in the background there, we've got the big Kenner version, which I love. I loved playing with as a kid. My brother Steve got me this for Christmas one year. And of course, it's the same thing. The guns all move. Uh, it's got the same guns on the other side. Uh, because there are different versions that you don't have that kind of gun necessarily on each side. And of course, it's got the flip up 
flip up canopy and then the top opens and it's enough room for one pilot in there not two um but <clears throat> there you have it guys the the atsts the captain foley atst collection available exclusively at trekyard central command <laughs> anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video um I will be doing another one about the build of the C-3PO and R2-D2 Bandai kits as well. A lot of problems with those kits, in my opinion. They're not perfect by any means. But uh, again, those were done at Dave's, so it was just build, build, build. And once built, um, they were uh, done. So I just took build pictures of the process. I'll walk you through a video of that and all the little problems I had with those. Because trust me, they were numerous and uh, plenty and yeah they weren't fun they weren't fun bandai does some good stuff but they also do some things that i don't agree with so and there goes my flash so anyway guys till next time it's captain foley signing off bye